Oh, hi. Good to see you. Today we're going to start some new stuff in trigonometry in outcome T1, and we're going to consider some vocabulary that we're going to use throughout this trig this year and also in our trig in 40S. Please enjoy this unbelievably exciting video on trigonometry. Okay, in section 2.1, and in fact I'm calling it 2.1.1, the first part of 2.1, we're going to consider angles in standard position. Okay, so what are angles, what are quadrants, that kind of stuff. Well, in geometry, an angle is formed by two rays that have a common endpoint called a vertex. So you have a vertex, and you have two rays, and it forms, well, an angle. We've seen that before. In trigonometry, though, we're going to consider angles as a rotation of a single ray, that it starts at a certain place, and it ends up at another place. The starting position is called the initial arm, and the final position is called the terminal arm. Now, if the angle of rotation is counterclockwise, then the angle is positive, has a positive value. If the angle of rotation is clockwise, then the angle is negative. This year, we're really going to focus in on positive values of angles, um, and so we'll only be really considering counterclockwise angles. Okay. Now, what's an angle in standard position? Well, an angle in a coordinate plane is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and the initial arm is the positive x-axis. Okay? So angles in standard position are always shown on the Cartesian plane. That's the standard x-y plane that you've known and loved all your life. Well, at least the last couple of years. The x-axis and the y-axis divide the plane into four quadrants. Okay? Quadrant 1 is located here. Any angle in quadrant 1 starts on the positive x-axis and rotates up to a, some kind of terminal arm, like there in this drawing. And this angle is between 0 and 90 degrees in size. Any angle in quadrant 2 must fall between 90 degrees and 180. So, for example, this terminal arm is this angle here that started on the positive x-axis and rotated all the way to where it stopped. This angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. An angle in quadrant 3, like this angle, for example, starts on the positive x-axis and rotates all the way around into the third quadrant. And that must be between 180 and 270 degrees. And finally, we have quadrant 4. Any angle in quadrant 4 began way back on the positive x-axis and rotated and rotated and rotated and came all the way to this final terminal spot. And so that angle, that huge angle, must be between 270 and 360 degrees. Okay. In this example here, we'd like you to take a moment to sketch angles in standard position. So we have a 35 degree angle, a 230 degree angle, and a 310 degree angle. Okay, I'll do the first one. Where's a 35 degree angle going to be located? That's going to be over here somewhere in quadrant 1. Okay. Where's the 230 going to be located and the 310 degree angle going to be located? Well, why don't you take a moment here to place those angles? Okay, that should be enough time because uh, it's just a matter of where 230 falls. Well, that's more than 180 
and less than 270. 180 is over here, 270 is over here. And so 230 is approximately that angle there. 310, it's located in the fourth quadrant, looks something like that. Okay, now we're going to talk about another new term, which is called a reference angle. So this is on the next page. So for each angle in standard position, there is a corresponding uh, acute angle. That is, theta must be less than 90 degrees. In fact, we call it theta r. must be less than 90 degrees. And this is called... Uh, the reference or the reference angle. Okay, the symbol for it, if we're talking about angle theta, we put a little r. That's the symbol when we're talking about the reference angle. We put a little sub r there. Okay. Uh, it is formed between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis. The reference angle is always acute and measures between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay? So in quadrant 1, this really tiny diagram, it's located somewhere there. The reference angle is exactly the same value as the angle itself. In quadrant two, the angle is this angle here, that's theta. Theta r is the angle between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis. Quadrant three, Here's an angle, this huge angle, which is larger than 180 degrees, is theta. And the reference angle is this little angle here in blue. That's theta sub r, the distance between the terminal arm and the x-axis. And we could similarly draw an angle in quadrant four. Now there's a nice little set of formulas that develop that relate the relative, or the reference angle, sorry, with the angle itself and the x-axis nearest. So those are formulas that would be important to just kind of know. And now just a quick example. Determine the reference angle theta r for each of these thetas. Uh, sketch theta in standard position and label the reference angle. So I'd like you to pause now and try that for both of these. I'll take it up in one second. All right, welcome back. Here we go. 140 degrees is located somewhere around here. This is a 140 degree angle. Right there, and we'll call that theta. Now where's theta r located? That's just this little angle here. The distance between the terminal arm of the angle and the x-axis, that's called theta r. And what's the value of theta r? Well, it's 180 minus 140. That is a 40 degree reference angle. In the second case, where is 300 located? Well, let's see. 360 is a full circle. 270 degrees would get you just down here. So we're a little past 270 say around right there. That is a 300 degree angle for theta. Where's the reference angle? It's right there. And how big would that angle be? Well, if the full circle is 360 and the angle in black is 300, then there's 60 degrees left over for our reference angle. We could also find that value by using the formula above. Okay, take a moment now 
to do some of the homework from this section and we'll continue on in this document with new lessons kind of a little bit at a time.